All right, you ready? You ready? You ready? Sorry, I didn't have this earlier, but we're in first period. Oh, no decorations. It's, about, it's Christmas time. So we're going to read from this little book on night games. The PDF is on Schoology, but my children don't like to read. They like to be read too. So these are the little books. So far, I've liked one of the stories, the diary. All the other ones are weird where the phone tried to attack the girl, remember? Yeah, so this is night games. It looks kind of spooky. I don't know. And then you have questions on Schoology. Janice was about to take a sip of coffee when the chair beside her suddenly shot backwards. Her hand jerked. The hot liquid sloshed against her chin and dripped onto her blouse. Whoops, she heard. She turned her eyes to the young man standing behind the chair. You, she muttered. I didn't mean to scare you, he said. Of course not. Not you. Is he a ghost? Mind if I sit? Janet didn't answer. She grabbed a napkin and dried herself as she sat down on the chair. He slapped his book of Edgar Allan Poe mysteries on the table and smiled. What are you up to? He asked. I was studying. The student union's no place to study. Not with you here. He laughed. How right you are. I'll leave, but first you have to promise you'll go to the show with me tonight. There's a great double bill at the Metro Dawn of the Dead and... You must be joking. After the stunt you pulled at Chainsaw, I'll never step into a movie theater with you again. I'll never go anywhere with you again. He smiled. Oh, come on. I didn't hurt anyone. You scared those kids witless. That's all you ever want to do, scare people. You're almost 20, Lyle. Why don't you grow up? He frowned, pretending to pout. Does this mean you won't go to the movies with me? Right. He suddenly smiled. How about a midnight picnic at the graveyard? No, thanks, she said. Find someone else to play your night games with. What I say? What I say? Night games. I thought it was going to be like video games, night yeah. games. I don't know. It's too cold for outdoor games anyway. How about a visit to the Creek Moss house instead? Janice shook her head. Give me a break. You wouldn't set foot in that old house. Wait, you wouldn't set foot in that old. Oh, I skipped the page. That old place for a million bucks. When it comes right down to it, you're a chicken, Lyle. Oh, yeah, I'd go in, but I bet you wouldn't. How much? Ten bucks. You're right. For ten bucks, I won't go near the place. She took a sip of coffee. What about a hundred? Are you kidding me? Have you got the guts? For a hundred dollars, I've got plenty. Even as she spoke, she felt a shiver of fear. Lyle leaned closer, elbows on the table. Aren't you afraid the ghosts will get you? He said in a low voice. We should have read this in October. Yeah. Into a house. Into a house. Um, aren't you afraid the ghosts will get you? She goes, I don't believe in ghosts. They said Creek Moss didn't either until it crept out of the dark and tore him to pieces. That's garbage, Janet said. He grinned. Then you'll go inside the house with me. For a hundred dollars, I will. What if I give you 500? What for? To spend the night alone in the house. Janice's heart started thudding hard. She suddenly felt cold and sick inside. Are you nuts? You said there's no ghost. So what is there to be afraid of? All you have to do is stay there until the morning and I'll give you $500. I'd be like, let me see the 500 first. She started to pick up the coffee cup, but her hand was shaking so badly that she had to set it down again. $500 was more than she made in a month working part-time at the university library. Do you have that kind of money to waste? He laughed. Oh, it won't be wasted because long before dawn, you'll run out of the house screaming. If that happens, and it will, I won't owe you a penny. Hang on. I think Jacob wants to read y'all. Uh, yeah. Jan oh, that's a good idea. Y'all should be in the questions. That way, if a question comes up while I read it and it's answered... That's called a strategy, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob's sitting there pretty without his computer even on. A strategy. Get into the questions. What are they going to ask me? Janice wiped her sweaty hands on her skirt. Bring the cash, she said. That afternoon, Janice walked to a shopping mall near the campus. She was very nervous. She felt better, however, after buying a cashmere sweater that she had wanted for a long time. It cost a lot of money. But by tomorrow, she would be $500 richer, so she knew she could afford it. In a sporting goods store, she found what she needed next to the glass case full of handguns. 
I'll take that. She's buying a gun. Oh, she's the, smart, bro. You know, the clerk, you can't kill a ghost with a gun. The, cor the clerk looked at her strangely and she blushed. With the packages clenched in her arms, she hurried towards her apartment. The sky to the north was dark with clouds, and from the fresh smell of the breeze, she knew there would soon be a storm. She was safe inside by the time it hit. Standing at her window, she saw lightning rip across the sky. Rain blew against the glass. Thunder rumbled. On a hill far across town, the steep roof of the old Creek Moss house was visible. In a few hours, she would be alone inside that awful place. She rubbed her arms. They were bumpy with, they say goose flesh. We say goose bumps, but in the story it says goose flesh. She thought about backing down, but she already spent nearly a hundred dollars. Now she really needed the money from Lyle. There's no such things as ghosts, she told herself. It crept out of the dark and tore him into pieces. Garbage, garbage. She changed clothes, putting on jeans, a flannel shirt, and boots. She made spaghetti for dinner. How'd she get a what? Exactly. And a sweater. It's just a story, y'all. She made spaghetti for dinner, but she couldn't eat much. The time passed by very slowly. She tried to study, but she couldn't keep her mind on the book. She stared at the television. Finally, at five minutes to 10, she slipped into her jacket. She put on a battered old cowboy hat to keep the rain off her head, picked up her sleeping bag and purse, and went downstairs. As she reached the lobby, she saw Lyle's Mustang swing to the curb. She pushed open one of the glass doors and rushed through the downpour. Lyle opened the passenger door for her. She climbed in. What a wonderful night, Lyle said, for ghoulies and ghosties. Have you got the money? But of course, I made the trip to my friendly bank. He took out his wallet, turned on the light, and counted out 10 $50 bills. 10 $50 bills? Oh, yeah, that's 500. Okay, Janice said. He put them back in his wallet. You're really going to try this, are you? I'm not going to try. I'm going to succeed. Why is your voice shaking? Because I'm cold. Oh, I thought you were just a little bit scared. Let's get going, Janice said, ignoring his teasing. At first, there were many houses along the roadside, and then fewer and fewer, and finally none at all. Nor were there any street lamps. As they drove through the darkness, the wet surface of the road ahead of them shone in the glare of the car's headlights. Lao slowed down and turned onto a narrow road. It led up to a wooded hillside. We're almost there. How are you doing? Just fine, Janice told him. He laughed. He sounded nervous himself, and he wasn't the one who would be spending the night at the house. As they reached the top of the hill, jagged lighting crossed the sky. In the brightness, Janice glimpsed the old house, its shadowy porch, its boarded windows, steep roof and tower. When darkness returned, Janice shut her eyes and wished she were somewhere else. Thunder roared, roar, roar, I can't say that word, roared in her ears. Wow. Here we are, Lyle said. Janice looked out her window as the car stopped in front of an open gate. Now you'll be staying right here, she asked. All night, if it takes that long, which it won't, I'll give you about 10 minutes. Okay, so he's going to wait outside in the car for her. No problem. I've taken care of that. I came up here this afternoon and broke open the front door for you. Thanks. Beyond the gate was an overgrown yard. A few stairs led up to the front porch. The porch looked back. The door is there, she asked. He nodded. Now, you aren't going to try any funny stuff, are you? Like what? Like sneaking in to scare me. Who, me? If you do, I get the money whether I stay all night or not. Don't worry, I'm not going in there. Is it a deal, she asked. Yeah, sure, I'll stay right here. At sunrise, I want you to come in after me. Well, you have to promise, Janice said. Okay, I promised. But believe me, you won't last that long. Yes, I will. Is there anyone you want me to get in touch with you if the ghost gets you? Very funny. She wrapped an arm around her sleeping bag, threw open the car door and climbed out. Looking at the ground, she rushed through the gate. The rain pattered on her hat and back as she raced through the weeds. <sighs> no, didn't say. Is that a question? Her boots thudded on the porch stairs. Standing in the darkness, she opened her purse and took out a flashlight. She shined it on the door. A padlock hung on the frame, but the metal plate that should have been screwed to the door had been torn loose. 
She curled her fingers around the cold knob and eased the door open. It groaned on its hinges. The noise made Janice grit her teeth. Nobody can hear that, she told herself. Nobody has lived here for 13 years. And there is no ghost. She stepped into the house. That was a test question, by the way. Thank you, Mark. Janice pushed the creaking door shut slowly. Watch Jacob still get it wrong. How long? How long had anyone lived in the house? Thank you. Janice pushed the creaking door shut slowly, wishing it would keep quiet. There was a silence except for the sofa, soft sound of the rain. For a long time, she stood close to the door without moving. She hardly dared to breathe, but she felt as if she were not alone in the house. It's only nerves, she said. Well, what if someone had come in after Lau broke the door, broke the lock off the door? Or what if Lau had talked a friend into waiting inside to scare her? He might have done that. She raised her flashlight. The pale beam lit a stairway just ahead. A hallway rang alongside the stairs. To her left and right were entries to rooms. She turned to the left, walked quietly. This must be the living room. Her light swept over the bare wooden floor walls. Except for a steam radiator, the room was empty. She saw a door at the far end. If she settled here, she could get out quickly, but that wasn't her plan. Besides, this room had two ways in. She didn't like that. She needed a small room with only one door, like a bedroom. She backed through the entry, felt a chill on her neck at the thought of someone sneaking up behind her and whirled around. No one was there. She let out a shaky breath and shined her light on the stairway. She didn't want to go up there. Old man Creek Moss's body, they said, had been found in a bedroom on the second floor. That was years ago, Janice told herself. His killer is long gone. Oh, oh look at question number six. She, stared, she started up the stairs. The boards creaked and groaned. With each step, she grew more sure that someone was crouching in the hallway above her just out of sight waiting to leap out maybe a friend of lyle maybe someone else or something don't get crazy nobody is there two steps from the top she halted and listened her own heartbeat sounded very loud except for that she heard only the rain on the roof then came a long low moan that sent a shiver crawling up her back it's only the wind please it's only the wind <laughs> Holding her breath, she dashed up the last two stairs. She flashed her light down the narrow hall, spun around, and shined it the other way. She saw no one. Quickly, she stepped to the nearest door, pushing it open. She leaned into the room. It was a smaller than the one downstairs and empty, except for a radiator next to the hall. Those were the heaters back in the day. We used to have radiators. Yeah, the little, yeah, you don't see those anymore. Um, as thunder rumbled over the house, she sprang into the room. She shut the door and leaned against it, gasping. From her purse, she took a wooden wedge with a nail in, in its thick end. Crouching, she shoved the narrow edge into the gap. Between the bottom of the door and the floor, she pushed it in tight. Then she tried to open the door, but it didn't budge. The wedge worked as well as a lock. She took a spool of wire from her purse and twisted one end around the nail head. With the yank of the wire, the wedge slipped out from under the door. That way she can get out. Um, there she spread her sleeping bag on the floor. She found a small shiny key inside her purse. The room's only window with boards across the outside was several yards away. She walked over to it and placed the key on the window seal. Uh, then she returned. I smell matches. I smell, uh, I smell fire. Yeah. Do you smell it too? I smell matches burning. Then she returned to the radiator and crawled into her sleeping bag. She took from her purse the handcuffs she had brought at the mall, fastened one bracelet around her right wrist and snapped the other one against the radiator. That way no one can take her. She's hanked up herself against the radiator. I give you about 10 minutes, Lau said. He was wrong. She would be there until sunrise. Cuffed to the radiator, the key out of reach. She couldn't leave if she wanted to. Oh, so she cuffs herself so she can't leave. A few hours from now, she would be $500 richer. Janice tried to sleep. Here's your next question. Why was Janice unable to sleep? Elena. Janice tried to sleep. She was warm enough, but the floor felt hard. 
with her wrist cuffed to the radiator, she could only lie on her back or one side. Neither position was comfortable. Besides, she was too afraid to sleep. The wind whistled and groaned and howled around the house. Every so often, a roar of, oh my God, this is a long book. Every so often, a roar of thunder made her jump. Then came the soft sound of a creaking board. She listened, not daring to breathe, and heard it again. It was a sound much the same as she had been sneaking up the stairway. A chill raced up her back. She squirmed deeper into her sleeping bag. It's nothing, she told herself. No one is there. But the creaking didn't stop. It came closer and closer. It's in the hall, a voice inside her scream. She whispered softly and pressed her left hand to her mouth as the doorknob rattled. Calm down, she thought. It's Lyle. It has to be Lyle. Is he crazy? He'd agree to turn over the money if he tried to scare her. What if he is crazy? Maybe all this was a trick to get her alone. She stiffened as something thudded against the door. Lyle, she yelled. You creep. I know it's you. You promised to stay out. Another thud shook the door. Get out of here. You promised. She heard a moan that wasn't the wind because it came from the other side of the door. Stop that, she called. The moan grew louder, a lonely, inhuman sound that seemed to freeze Janice's bones. It rose to a roar and slowly faded. She flinched at the, as the door shook with another blow. Sitting up, she found her flashlight. She aimed it at the door. Lyle, that is you, isn't it? There was silence. Answer me, please. The silence continued. Janice panted for air. Her heart was pounding so hard she thought it might burst. The pale beam of her flashlight trembled on the door. Look, just say it's you, Lyle. You can keep your money if you just say it's you. What? I see smoke. Is it me? Uh, there better be a fire alarm or something. I smell smoke. I see it. The door ripped. The door ripped from its frame and crashed to the floor. Into the room lurched something that wasn't Lyle. It was not a man at all. It was a slobbering, dead, white beast from the pit of a nightmare. Janice? Lyle's voice echoed through the house. Janice, where are you? Up here, she called. She looked at the window. Sunlight pressed through the cracks in the board, sending dusty rain. I've got to give you credit. I never thought you would make it. Oh, right. He appeared in the doorway and shined his flashlight. Oh no, what happened? Janice shrugged. Your hair, it's white. It is? Frowning, she pulled strands down her face and looked at them. I guess I can dye it. Well, what happened? It came. Get the key for my cuffs, would you? She pointed, she pointed towards the window seal. He rushed across the room, grabbed the key, crouched beside her. The ghost came? Not a ghost, something else. What? I don't know. Did it hurt you? She shook her head. Lau unlocked the cuff and freed her hand. Grabbing the front of his jacket, Janice yanked him hard. He fell across her. His head crashed against the metal tubes of the heater. Janice snapped the cuffs around his wrist. As he lay there groaning, she took the key. She removed her $500 from his wallet. What are you doing? Let me go. Janice shook her head. It wants you, Lyle. It wants you, not me. It'll be back tonight. I like that one. So your question six is at the end of the story, Janice gets even with Lyle for her terrifying experience. Do you think she was right to do what she did? No. Oh, wow. That was a good story. That was cute. It was scary. I'm going to try to find a Christmas one. Bye. I